Okay, folks, welcome back. And today, in this video, we are going to cover installing the Java Development Kit on Windows 10. I'll have a series of videos for installing lots of different things. This one is about installing the Java Development Kit. A few words about Java. A Java program is written in the Java programming language. It is then compiled into what's called bytecode. The Java Development Kit is used to compile the program. So if you want to write Java programs for yourself, you need the uh, Java Development Kit, or what we call it the JDK for short, JDK, it's the initials. Once you have this bytecode, the Java runtime environment, or JRE, is then used to run the compiled bytecode. What's nice about this arrangement is that you can write and compile a program on Windows and then have that program run on a Mac. Or you could write and compile your Java program on a Linux machine and have that bytecode run on Windows. So this is what we really like about the Java programming language. There are some newer versions of the uh, Java Development Kit. However, for the purposes of my classes, at least for now, uh, we'd like you to use version 1.8. So please don't rush off and just download and install the latest version. Make sure you're getting version 1.8. Uh, another important tip here is that for Windows, we want to make sure that you're installing the 64-bit edition, and that will install to your program files folder on your hard disk. So let's go ahead and get started. We will go and visit the website for the Java Development Kit version 8. Uh, it's called 1.8. They simply call it, call it 8 here. Okay, so standard edition development kit. This is where we want to be. We'll scroll down through the different operating systems. Notice there are two different selections here. Make sure that you are working with the selection for Windows X64. This is the 64-bit edition. So we'll go ahead and click on that download button. Okay. I have reviewed and accept the license agreement. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now on Oracle's website, you will need an account in order to be able to download software. If you don't have an account, you can click the create account button here and it will take you through the steps. It's just like creating an account on any website. You need your name and your, your email address and so on. They'll confirm it. And then you can come back here and log in to download your files. I already have an account. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in and we will see here that the Java development kit is downloading. Uh, while that is downloading, I'll just point out one other thing. You'll notice here that this is uh, update 261. By the time you're watching this video, it is entirely possible that Oracle has released uh, Java development kit update uh, 271 or 285 or something like that. Uh, it's not a significant difference. Um, just keep in mind that your actual file name might be a little bit newer, so it might say 8 update uh, 270 or 280 or something like that. Okay, so it looks like our download has finished. I can go ahead and run my uh, file explorer and look in the downloads folder, and there it is. Right. Uh, one thing that I did do, which I really like doing here, is in File Explorer, uh, you can choose the View menu and view your file name extensions. This is also very helpful because then you can actually see it's an executable.exe. So let's go ahead and double click on that and it's going to run an installer. We're going to, yes, allow it to make changes to our system. Okay, this is gonna take us through the steps. We'll go ahead and click Next. It'll ask us what parts we want. We want the development tools, the source code, and the Java runtime environment. Notice it's going to install, the default here is program files. We know that's good because that's the 64-bit code is there. Uh, Java, and then you'll have your actual uh, folder named after the release, 1.8 uh, with update 261. 
go ahead and hit next, let that go through the process. Again, it's comforting to know we're installing the 64-bit edition. Uh, now it's asking us about the Java runtime environment. It's gonna go in a similar folder. This time it's JRE. So we're gonna need both pieces in order to work with the Java development kit. Give that a few minutes to install. Okay, that did not take long and I think we are all set. What we'll do now is we'll take a look here on our C drive and we will go to our program files. Again, this is where the 64-bit software goes. <clears throat> the 32-bit software goes in the x86 folder down here. But we're gonna go into program files. We'll look in Java and here we have our JDK and the JRE. So the JDK for writing and compiling Java programs and the JRE for running Java programs. Let's just double check that we have all of the right folders here and we'll look in bin. We will see here that we have Java C, that's the compiler, and Java is the runtime, right? So all of that looks good. So the next thing we need to do, now that we have our JDK has been downloaded and installed, we now need to set what's called the Java home environment variable. Uh, many programs on Windows and on Mac and on Linux, they use environment variables to hold different information. Uh, I would say a default Windows installation probably has over a dozen different environment variables that just control different aspects of the operating system. Okay, so to do that, Let's go here to the start menu and we can just start typing in environment. The first thing that comes up here is edit system environment variables. We'll go ahead and run that. Then we'll see here there's a button called environment variables. We'll go ahead and click into that. I'm just gonna take a quick look here. These are the variables that are already defined. I don't see a Java home, so I will click new. We're gonna go ahead and type in Java home. And then for the variable path, all right, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm just gonna highlight the name of the path and copy it. So it's C program files, Java JDK 1.8.0 underscore 261. And now I can switch back here and paste that in. It's also always helpful to just copy and paste it rather than trying to type it because if you make a mistake, it can cause some funny errors and it's kind of tough to track it down. Okay, so now we have the Java home environment variable all set. We can close this up and we can close this up. Our last step is going to be to test whether or not we have the right version installed. So let's go again to our Windows Start menu and we will run a command prompt and CMD. That gives us our nice command prompt here. And the first thing we can do is echo our Java home environment variable. And we can make sure that that is set. If for some reason we had not set our Java home, we wouldn't see anything there. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do is look at my Java version. Okay, so we use the Java program, we invoke it with a dash version command line. And we see here that the version is 1.8.0 and update 261. So at that point, I think we have everything installed correctly. We can just close this up. We'll just type exit and we are in good shape. I've just included these here. This is echoing the environment variable and this is the Java dash version, you put a space in there, Java dash version, and that will print out your version. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope to see you all in the next video.